All right, today we're going to move on from inverse trig functions and make some applications to solving trig equations. We're going to cover this topic over several days. Um, today is just going to be a simple uh, kind of one-step process, and then we'll involve more and more algebra into it, even up to factoring the expressions and solving uh, equations that are in quadratic form but related to trig functions instead of um, just regular old inverse operations. All right, well, here we go. First example. Now, what makes this a trig equation? There's some. It's got some trig stuff in it. Yeah. It has a trig function in it. Sine is a trig function. But ah, bless you. <laughs> shots fired. Um, Sine of x is the square root of 3 over 2. What makes this a trig equation? Snot's fired. Um, good job, Emma. Um, sine of x is the square root of 3 over 2. What makes this a trig equation is the fact that we're looking for an unknown value. So anytime we're looking for an unknown value, we're going to solve. So we're going to take ourselves through a series of questions. Um, because this is the sine function, this value that I'm looking for has to be an angle because we put angles into the trig functions and numbers come out. Okay, and we're told here that the angle we're looking for is between 0 and 2 pi, including 0 because it's equal to 0, but not including 2 pi because it's strictly less than. So we're interested in angles that could go all the way around quadrant 1, through quadrant four is where we're interested in. That's always going to be important. Um, you're going to be told where the answer has to be. Sometimes the answer will be in the first quadrant only. We're only looking for first quadrant solutions. Because we have to limit this to a specific quadrant or else we have an infinite number of answers. Some of our equations that we're going to look at will have an infinite number of answers. And when we get to those, I'll explain to you how to, how to write that solution uh, you obviously can't list individual answers if there's an infinite number of them. Um, but we've got a, a, a finite number of answers here. Um, so we're going to go back to our same familiar questions. What is the reference angle that produces this side value, and what quadrants does it have to be in? All right? So a pi over 3 is the reference angle that gives us a sine value of the square root of 3 over 2. Because it's positive, which two quadrants can we place that reference angle in? 1 and 2, One and two is where the sine value is positive. Okay, so we're going to have a look at um, pi over 3 in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2 because that's where the sine value is positive. So I'm going to have two solutions, one's in quadrant 1 and one's in quadrant 2. If I place pi over 3 in quadrant 1, that's just going to be pi over 3, right? What is pi over 3 in the second quadrant? 2 pi, two pi over 3. Is that right? Because if we went all the way around to pi, pi is equivalent to 3 pi over 3. So if we come back 1, that would be 2 pi over 3. And if you're looking at your unit circle, I mean, you can just pull those answers straight off the unit circle. The two solutions to this equation are um, pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. That's the two <coughs> solutions to this equation on this interval, when x has to be between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so this is, this is a very simple trig equation. It looks a whole lot like stuff that we've already done, actually. We're just putting these basic trig facts into play and using them to solve trig equations, which is, in some ways, this is the end game for trigonometry. Using the skills that we've learned, using the skills that we've learned to solve equations, right? That's what algebra is. Algebra is the set of skills necessary to solve equations. So all the skills that we've been doing, inverse trig functions, um, unit circle, learning that table of values is kind of all taking us to this point. We're going to use all those skills to solve trigon trigonometric equations. And when you get to calculus, you'll do this a lot uh, in relationship to the derivatives. 
Um, so sine of x equals square root of 3 over 2 on the interval from 0 to 2 pi has two solutions, pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. All right, example 2. Cosine of x is equal to negative square root of 2 over 2. Cosine x equals negative square root of 2 over 2. And here, the angle that we're looking for is between negative pi and positive pi. All right, so we have to be careful that we get our answers in the correct place, correct, correct uh, domain. Our angle here is limited. Remember, the cosine function works on angles. So this is an angle that we're looking for. And that angle is between uh, negative pi and positive pi. Negative pi starts here and goes in a negative direction to there. Positive pi starts there and goes in a positive direction there. So that's the, it's all four quadrants, but it's not all four quadrants zero to two pi. It's all four quadrants negative pi to positive pi. All right, so we're still going to ans ask ourselves the same questions. Um, what is the angle that has a value of, the reference angle that has a value of square root of 2 over 2? Reference angle is pi over 4. That's correct. Because the cosine is negative, what quadrants are, go are we going to place that value in? Quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. Because the cosine is positive, in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So my reference angle is pi over 4. The reference angle is pi over 4. And I'm in quadrant 2, quadrant 4, because it is negative. So my angle is going to be here. And here, pi over 4. Now, here what's, here's what's crucial in this problem. I cannot start here and go all the way around there to get to that angle. Right. Because that would take me to where? That's 5 pi over 4, right? And 5 pi over 4 is not in this interval. It's more than pi, which is 4 pi over 4. So we have to, to get to the to that uh, quadrant four, excuse me, quadrant three angle. I said quadrant four here, which is incorrect. And y'all let me do it. Quadrant three. Quadrant three. To get to that quadrant three angle, I have to go uh, in a negative direction. So, like, wouldn't they be the same thing, just negative? One's positive and one is is negative, right? And we haven't talked a whole lot about this, but this has to do with the fact that the cosine function is even. It signs the same values to positive pi as it does to negative pi. It signs the same value to pi over 4 as it does to negative pi over 4. So it's an even function. Uh, we mentioned that when we graphed, but only briefly. So the two solutions would be um, in the first, excuse me, in the second quadrant, our solution is going to be uh, pi over 4 reference angle in the second quadrant is going to give us what? What angle is that? Not 5 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4. Right, because if we went all the way around, it would be 4 pi over 4. But we didn't quite make it to 4 pi over 4. We stopped 1 pi over 4 shy. So um, this solution is 3 pi over 4. And in the third quadrant, I have to travel this direction because that's what my original restraints told me. And that's going to be pi over 4 shy of negative pi, which is negative 3 pi over 4. Okay, so the two solutions for this problem are going to be um, negative 3 pi over 4 and positive 3 pi over 4.
What part? Which part do you not get, Rachel? Um, I just thought it'd be three pi over four and five pi over four. All right. Now the reason it can't be five pi over four is because our original problem restricted the angles oh, to wait. that interval. Wait, I kind of get that because you just started that way. Never mind. That's right. So if you go to five, if you went to this angle this way, we go right past pi. And we can't go past pi. We have to be less than pi. Okay. Yeah, and so since we can't get to it that direction, we're forced to go this direction to get to that angle. All right? Is that good? That, this, this information that we start with right here is extremely important. That tells us where our answers have to be. Now, is the cosine of 5 pi over 4 equal to the negative square root of 2 over 2? It absolutely is. But that's not the solution we're looking for. We're looking for these two solutions to the problem. All right? And that's, uh, there are practical applications to this when you're dealing with uh, uh, trigonometry. I mean, uh, the trig things that you look at in calculus. Um, we don't want to, we want to limit our, our analysis down to specific angles in a specific um, range or domain in this case. Okay? All right, let's look at another one. Tangent of x equals negative 1. And we're going from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So I'm going to work this without the animations, and then we'll kind of put the animations in play and see it through. The first thing we want to do is determine where the angles are going to be. This information right here tells us that the angles have to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Negative pi over 2 starts here and goes down to there. And then positive pi over 2 sweeps up to there. So my answers can only be in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. Nowhere else. Okay, now I need to answer two questions. What is the reference angle? Pi over 4, right? Because the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. In which of these two quadrants is it negative? Tangent is negative in... in quadrant actually 2 and 4, but 2 is not in play, is it? Okay, so we're going to take only one answer here. So the answer that I'm looking for is pi over 4 in the fourth quadrant. But our original problem tells us how we have to get there. Can we go all the way around to get there? can't go all the way around to get there, right? Because if we're going in a positive direction, this domain limits us to right there. We have to stop. Can't go past there. So to get to that angle, we're going to have to go negative direction. My reference angle is pi over 4, so the answer here is negative pi over 4. Only one solution. How did you get the reference angle? From your table of values, the tangent of pi over 4 is equal to 1. So basically, anytime you have a tangent, you need to look at the chart. Yeah, yeah. Look at your table of values. And that, that table of values, and that's one kind of, uh, I think it's one advantage of the table over the unit circle. If you would use the unit circle, you have to go into the unit circle and divide everything. Now, you can look at the unit circle and see um, pretty quickly that the coordinates of your 45 degree angle there on the unit circle are square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. That's sine and cosine, and sine divided by cosine there would be equal to 1. So you can see that the tangent of pi over 4 is 1, but it's a little quicker if you use that table that we put together. All right? So the, this number gives us the 
um, reference angle and the sine of the number gives us the quadrant that we're looking for. Okay? Is everybody good with that? Let's move. This is kind of the animation of the problem. the next example. Sine of x is 0. Alright, so we want to identify the angle that has a sine value of 0. And I'm limiting it to that domain. We're only going to go around once. Now this could be 4 pi, in which case we would want answers if we went all the way around twice. and That's a little bit more difficult to, to name those, but we're going to start here and we're going to stop there. Now I think that when you're dealing with zeros and ones with sine and cosine, that it makes sense to use your unit circle, quadrantal angles, um, coordinates. This is 1, 0. This is 0, 1. This is negative 1, 0. And this is 0, negative 1. That would be the uh, coordinates. So we're looking for these values that have um, cosine and sine, right? Which, which of these angles have a sine value that's equal to zero? zero? Zero and 180 or in radians? Pi. Yeah. Now, how do I know I'm dealing with radians here and they want radians for their answer? Because it gives us radian values there. So if you're given radian values, if this said 0 is less than or equal to x is less than 360, then we would give our answers in degrees. So how they ask the question determines how we are going to answer it. So this one has two solutions in this interval, 0 to, excuse me, 0 and pi. Now I'm going to show you uh, real quickly how I could change this to have three solutions. If for some reason this was 0 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 2 pi, then I would have to put 2 pi in my answer as well. But it doesn't. It stops short of 2 pi, and so we don't go all the way around and get two answers. Now, 0 and 2 pi have the same reference angle, but they're very different angles. 0 degrees and 360 degrees are, well, they're 360 degrees apart, <coughs> which is as far apart as two things can be in the, you know, one rotation of the all right, but we didn't have that scenario, so the answer here is just 0 and pi. Okay? This is not bad, right? Um, it's, it doesn't get much more difficult than this. Uh, the only thing that we're going to do is kind of play with these domain values a little bit and play with the operations that take place um, in the equation in order to get the sine value um, isolated. Like this one. Do what? Okay, this notation right here uh, in mathematics is uh, read for. Well, for every x that's an element of the real numbers. In other words, that's the whole domain of the sine function. So, how many solutions is this problem going to have? Yeah, it has infinite solutions. And it gets a little bit tricky in how we're going to write the answers. And I'll, but I'll show you. It's not that bad. Um, I'm going to show you how to express an infinite number of solutions. And we're going to have to kind of use some a little bit more complicated um, notation here than we've used before. But this, this symbol in mathematics always reads for all or for every. 
the upside down capital A is for all or for every X. But that's, that's how you read that. For every X that is an element of the real numbers. So we want all the answers. Positive angles, negative angles, etc. But the first thing we have to wrestle with is uh, determining what the angle value is, right? Or what the sine value of the angle is. So the first thing we're going to have to do is get sine x by itself. And how would we do that? We would subtract 1 and divide by 2. So the first step of the process is going to be subtract 1 and divide both sides by 2. But then we have an equation that's a little bit more um, simple. We know what we're looking at there, right? Our angle is x. The sine value of this angle is 1 half but it's negative, so that's going to tell us which quadrant it's going to go in. All right, let's, let's kind of go through the questions that we've asked so far. What is the reference angle that has a sine value of 1 half? Reference angle is uh, pi over 6. Let's, let's do this one in degrees. Y'all want to do it in degrees? Let's do it in degrees. Let's say the reference angle is 30 degrees. And which quadrants does it have to be in if the sign is negative? Mm -hmm. Quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. So my angle is going to be a 30 degree angle here or a 30 degree angle here. 30 degrees, 30 degrees. Because the sign is positive in the first and second quadrant, we're looking for angles that are in the second excuse me, third and fourth quadrant. What are those two angles? 210 and 330. Right? That's two of the infinite solutions. <laughs> how, how are we going to express an infinite number of things? Hey, we're on to something. You're remembering something that you've learned before. That's exactly right. Uh, but not just plus, plus or, or, minus. or minus. Because here, here's the deal. We could, this angle, let me get a different color here. Something, let's do purple. So from this angle, I could go all the way around 360 degrees in that direction and get to it again, right? Forever. And I could also, from this angle, though, I could go all the way around in this direction, negative direction, and get back to it 360 degrees forever. All right, so to express this as an infinite set, we're going to do 360 degrees. And I'm not, I'm not going to use uh, N. I'm going to use K plus or minus 360K. Why did I do 360? I don't yeah, I was yeah, we all should ask. Well, we didn't even have time to ask. <laughs> I'm sorry, Emma. My degrees look like sixes, but that's okay. This is degrees. And then we have to define what K is. K is an element of... Capital Z is the symbol for the integers. Do we have to write that? Yes. You have to write that. Now, you can, at the beginning of a test, specify somewhere that K, uh, K represents an element of the integers. And you don't have to write it for every single problem. When they're infinite like that, it'll always be the K is an element of the reals, right? Not reals, the integers. Or, uh, the integers, mm -hmm. sorry. Right. Okay. K is an element of the integers because... Well, Karen, sometimes it's going to be odd integers, so we'll have to talk about what that is. But K is an element of the integers. In other words, we can add 360. We could add 720. We could add, if it's K is 3, 1,080. Every time you change K to a different integer, then you're adding that many degrees to it mm -hmm. or subtracting that many degrees from it, and that's why the plus or minus 360K. So that's this set of... Uh, solutions that are generated by the 210 degree angle, but we still have this 330 to deal with. 
So the other set of answers will be 330 degrees plus or minus 360K degrees. And if this were, if this were, if we had decided to do radians, then we would have the two angles plus 2K pi. Okay, 2K pi is 2 pi K uh, is an integer. Huh. Plus or minus. What's the K K is an element of the integers, yeah, and the integers are uh, the positive and negative whole numbers. So you write that every single time? Like yes, I want you to kind of get accustomed to writing this like that. You're defining what K is. No, never change the K. No, it'll always be integers. Now, what we put, what we hit, what we put here, yeah, it, it's kind of standard. Okay. Um, uh, in. Well, you could use n and say n is an element of the integers. Uh, that works as well, but uh, it's kind of standardized. I'm not sure why trig textbooks use k, but they generally do. How do you know if it's, um, if it's like that and it's not just x equals 210? The way we know that is because we're told at the outset of the problem that k can be, so or that x can be. Yeah, no. that tells us that we have an infinite number of solutions. Yeah. That we're working with. So you're not going to have to figure that out. Yeah. Now, just just to make sure that we've got it, because you may you may choose to use radians instead of degrees. If we use radians, then our pi over six angle here would be seven pi over six, and this one would be eleven pi over six, right? And then so my two solutions would be seven pi over six. I said six and wrote two plus or minus 2 pi times k, right? Because 360 degrees is 2 pi. Most uh, textbooks are going to write that as 2k pi, where k is an integer. All right, and then the other set of answers would be 11 pi over 6 plus or minus 2k pi. 2 pi k is perfectly okay. I don't know. Just out of respect for pi, I don't know. Two pi k is is okay. Maybe because it sounds better. Two k pi sounds better. It's alphabetical. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's how that works. Let's look at another example here. This is going to click through. And they use uh, the integers there. And, and you'll notice that the, we didn't specify what it was. All right, back to a finite number of solutions. We're almost done. First thing we would need to do is what? Get the cosine by itself. Get the cosine by itself. And notice that we have a 4x in play. Be careful with that. We're still going to solve exactly the way we've been solving it. Um, this says the range is a little odd, but let's worry about that when we get rid of, get the trig function isolated. I, I really, th this is a misuse of the word range. Should be domain. Um, again, get the trig function by itself by solving, so we'll subtract the square root of 3 for both sides and divide by 2, and that's going to give us uh, 4x is equal to negative square root of 3 over 2. Now, this tells us that x is restricted to the first quadrant, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a problem because the cosine is not negative in the first quadrant. But the angle that we have in our problem is not x, it is 4x. Mm -hmm. So we need to adjust our domain if x is between 0 and 2 pi, where is 4x going to be? Excuse me, x is between 0 and pi over 2. If we multiply through by 4, we get 0 is less than or equal to 4x. 4 times pi over 2 is 2 pi. What did you do with that? I multiplied through by 4. Like, comment, and subscribe. Yes. Multiply 3 by 4. Why did that? I multiplied through the equation by 4 to make my angle here match my angle there. All right, let me show you guys some problems to work real quick. We're not going to finish this one, but... 
Yeah, we'll finish that one tomorrow. And you may struggle with one or two of the problems that are in the homework, but I still want you to see this. 5 through 10, 11 through 19 odd, section 5.3. What are, what are we supposed to say, Emma? Like, comment, and subscribe. Take five.